Welcome everyone back to the Dark Forest. I have some exciting news that will be happening sometime in the next year. I'm going to be doing a live stream when I hit 20,000 subscribers. Now you might say, oh wow, congratulations. I hope the Dark Forest is spooky enough to handle that kind of subscribage. Of course it is. But the live stream is really for you. I'm going to be doing a raffle giveaway, which means two lucky winners are going to win t-shirts of any one of my designs, any color and any size. Two lucky winners will win mugs. I have three different designs to choose from. And two lucky winners will win stickers. I have two different designs to choose from. So with that live stream, anyone that participates in the live stream chat, I'll put their name on pieces of paper, wrinkle them up, put them in a jar, and I will dish away six different names from the live stream. Six lucky winners for free merchandise. That's right. So next time you listen to some of my videos, make sure to spread me like butter. So once I get to that 20,000 mark, the sooner your chances are of winning big. This story takes place a couple of years ago when I lived in eastern Arkansas. I live in a small town about an hour away, maybe a little bit less from the border of Tennessee by Memphis. My family and I were camping at this RV resort at the time. It wasn't my RV, it was my father's, but it was just my parents and my siblings. It's something that we usually do at least once, maybe twice a year as a family. It was a weekend getaway, nothing out of the norm like usual, typical hikes, fishing, and nice campfire tales, and of course good barbecue, gotta throw that in there too. The first night was magical as always, not a cloud in the sky, it was humid but still had a nice slight breeze that was very enjoyable that I could remember. My dad cooked up burgers for everybody. That and some coleslaw and some baked beans with bacon. Typical, I know, but my dad was a pretty simple guy. As far as I can remember for this story, everything was kosher. Until I had to use the restroom that night. Now, we have an RV that has a restroom, but... With my luck, I had to go, and my younger brother was in there for a long time long time and I wasn't trying to wake up my parents by arguing with him. Luckily this RV had some pit-like toilets that were on the property and it wasn't terribly too far from our spot that we had that weekend. So I said screw it. I got my shoes and socks on, put on a jacket, grabbed my flashlight, and I went outside. It was pretty chilly that night. I don't remember what time it was exactly that I went outside, but it was colder than I thought it would have been, especially during summertime. I don't want to give too much details, TMI, but I could hold my pee, but there was no way I was waiting to go number two up in there with my brother being in there for at least 30 minutes. I had to go, and yeah, I couldn't wait any longer. Once I was outside... I turned on my flashlight, and I started walking in the direction down the dirt path where the bathrooms were located at. With the flashlight in my left hand, my right hand was tucked deep into my sweat jacket pocket in front, I slowly walked in the direction towards those bathrooms. A couple of minutes had passed, and I was in sight of the restrooms. Thank God I told myself. I don't know how much longer I could pinch this off. Eventually, I started speed walking. I reached the restrooms, got inside, locked the door behind me, and started laying my nest and quickly sat down to relieve myself. Oh, God, yeah! Oh, yeah! <clears throat> it 
If that wasn't horrifying enough, the noises came soon after. At this point, I was only thinking to myself, thank God I'm in the restroom. What the hell is outside? I was so terrified, I was even afraid to even open the door. I just sat there in total fright. I swear to you, this is a true story. As silly as it may seem, this is actually what had happened to me in the middle of the night. It's quite embarrassing in many ways. But it was horrifying to me. I don't know how long I waited inside that frickin' wooden porter potty thing. I was in there at least 15, maybe 20 minutes, heart beating out of my chest. I was so afraid to even move an inch. Eventually, I mustered up the courage to finish my business and to slowly creak open the wooden door and take a peek outside. I remember peeking my head out, looking around. I didn't see anything. It was pitch black out with a slight breeze that was chilled to the bone. But there was nothing in view from where I was at. Absolutely nothing. I inched my way little by little outside of that wooden door. I was still standing on the front wooden porch, afraid to step foot back onto the trail, not knowing where this noise was coming from. Eventually I did though. I started walking at a slow pace with my flashlight, constantly spinning around and looking behind me with any little sound that I heard whatsoever. I was completely freaked out. It seemed like the closer I was getting back to the RV, the more I felt like I was seriously being watched. I heard a snapping noise somewhere far off behind me. I turned around, shined my flashlight, and that's when I saw the red eyes. The red eyes of this large black silhouette behind some trees about 30 yards, maybe less. It had its head tilted with pointy ears. That's, that's all I could make out in the darkness. I couldn't really, truly see its full figure and everything with the flashlight that I had. But what I did see scared me to death. I remember screaming, turning around and running as fast as I could back to our RV, not giving two craps if I woke anybody else up. In fact, I was hoping I did. I got back to the RV. I told my family everything. I couldn't sleep that night, but I refused to ever go back to that camping site ever again. I'm from Alabama. I've been here most of my life, even though now that I'm sending you this story via email, I no longer reside in the South. I was out camping with my family when I was 14 years old, I still remember this day. I'm only 21 now and I'm in college, but those six or so years ago, I remember it like it was last week. We were camping over at Clear Creek Campground, which is in Jasper. It's a beautiful, family-friendly, pet-friendly location. The lake that's out there is awesome. People go tubing out there, people go fishing, they lounge on some inner tubes, there's some cute hiking trails out there, and there's some beautiful locations for RV camping. To be honest with you, before this occurrence took place, this was my favorite place to go camping with my family growing up. I remember it was just a typical afternoon when we had arrived at our spot and everyone started unloading all the stuff from the RV onto the picnic table and outside on the dirt. My dad had reserved this beautiful spot. It was really close to the lake. The weather was nice, partly cloudy, and it had a slight breeze. It was really a magnificent day that I could remember. 
Our dog was just running around, chomping away, playing around, running in circles, and messing with my younger siblings. I remember we were hiking that day. It was nice. There was quite a few other people also hiking on that same trail, as from what I could remember, the camping location was pretty packed. I don't remember seeing too many open spots that weekend. After we finished our hike, we got back and it was time for an early dinner. My dad never wanted to cook when it was getting dark because he felt like he was being rushed on the grill. And that's one thing my father hated most of all was to be rushed when it came to barbecuing. We had plenty, and I mean plenty of firewood that we had brought with us that we had stacked up next to the metal fire pit that was right there by the picnic table. We had lanterns that were uh, on the table as well, hung around a couple of the neighboring trees that were on our camping site. That way there was plenty of light if needed. Once the fire was going after we had finished our meal for that night, we all sat around in lawn chairs and just goofed around telling ghost stories and sipping on sodas. Everything was perfect. That was until we all started hearing the howling noises. Now, I'm native to Alabama, so I know a wolf or a coyote when I hear one. You know, Alabama really doesn't have too many wolves, you know, red or gray ones per se, but they're pretty rare. We have plenty of scavenging coyotes, I know that much. But this didn't sound like coyotes at all. I even asked my father and mother about it, and they just sat there gripping the edges of their lawn chair arms and just wide-eyed, just listening and looking all around. I was freaking out for one, and then I freaked out even more just how they were looking and acting. It wasn't like my dad to get spooked like that. He was in the army. He, nothing spooked him. I remember my dad just swigging off his beer and stepping up from the lawn chair. I remember him telling us, You kids just go inside. It's time for bed. I remember trying to fight him, but there was no point. Me and my brothers and my younger sister, we all followed suit and went inside the RV and shut the door behind us. I don't remember how long my parents were outside talking. We were all definitely watching our parents from outside the window trying to be all sneaky, but it almost seemed like they were arguing. Eventually we got bored and we started doing our own thing. My parents came inside and they had a long talk with us about nature and the risks and just animals being in their natural habitat and we need to respect nature and everything that lives amongst it. The typical speech that you usually get from your parents. Fast forward that night, everyone is asleep. I woke up completely dry mouthed, I mean cotton mouth. I was dying for some water. I don't know about everyone who's listening, but this happens all the time. I'm assuming I'm a snore. Actually, I've been told I am a snore. And I definitely sleep with my mouth open. So I'm assuming that's the reason why I'm always thirsty half the time when I wake up in the middle of the night or in the early morning. So that night I woke up completely cotton-mouthed. I slowly got out of my bed, not trying to wake anybody else up, as, you know, the RVs are pretty tight quarters, and I didn't want to wake anyone else up. I walked over to the kitchen section, grabbed a cup, and I started filling up some water from the sink. As I stood there, filling up my water, I was still half asleep. But I was staring out the window that was in front of the sink. And that's when I saw it. I saw this large, blackish figure with glowing red eyes. They looked red to me, at least. Again, I was half asleep. At first, I thought I was seeing something, but I rubbed my eyes and... No. Oh, that sucker was there. It was pretty far off, but it was right there at the edge of our camping spot. Probably a good 25 feet or so. 
maybe a little less. I don't know. But it was just standing there on its back legs, breathing heavily with its black fur. But it was standing on its back legs, completely still outside of its chest that was breathing in and out heavily. It didn't move a muscle. It was completely like a shadow or something. But I could tell it it was some kind of dog. A big one. It freaked me the hell out. I got away from the window, like, right after that. I basically downed my water and sat down there on the kitchen floor for a while trying to catch my breath. Still, not trying to wake anybody else up. I eventually stood back up and peeked over through that window again. And it was gone. Whatever the hell I saw completely vanished within, like, a minute. I don't know what I saw, but I talked to my father about it the next morning. He told me not to worry about it. I've done some research since then, and I'm pretty darn sure I saw a dogman outside our RV window. Whoa. I hope that you guys enjoyed the two true dogman sightings while camping stories tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends, and again, like always, spread me like butter.